Hey guys, some of you may recall a few months ago I went through some boxes of donated parts and miscellaneous items and that included some new old stock Zenith replacement electrolytics. Well, I thought I'd take a little break from my restoration projects to test a few. The thought being that, um, well, these have a limited life even if you don't use them. If you look at a modern electrolytic manufacturer's data sheet, they even mention shelf life. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're completely shot, but what uh, they do talk about is if it sits for a while, whether it's a cap from 50 years ago or five years ago, they need to be formed up. It's kind of like a, a car battery. They've been sitting for a long time, the chemicals, the oxide layers and, and whatnot need to get sort of built back up under a controlled slow process. Ideally, if this has been sealed in, in the electrolyte, the, the chemicals inside didn't dry out and didn't degrade, the paper insulating the material didn't disintegrate, it could be possible to form these up and use them. I don't recommend it, but if you are a vintage electronics enthusiast and if you come across some of these vintage parts, I'm not saying you can't use them, but what I will say is if we can form this up and it tests okay, yeah you could use it, but I would not I'd keep an eye on it. I wouldn't use it in something that I'm restoring for somebody else who doesn't know about vintage electronics and just wants their thing to work because I can't guarantee that they're not going to fail prematurely. They've already, they're already well, well, well past their shelf life. Well, anyways, what I'm getting at is even if they aren't being used, they do, they can fail. even. Uh, Unlike vacuum tubes, vacuum tubes have an, essentially an infinite shelf life. As long as no air gets inside, 100 years from now they could still be fine. These, not so much. So we have an 80 at 350, an 80 at 350, and a 15 at 350. Let's do one of the 80s, so half moon. Can common negative. Lug is positive. I'm in the electrolytic mode. So we are going to observe a few things. One, when we test for leakage, if this light flashes, it indicates there's leakage. The faster it flashes, the more leakage current there is. When we check the capacitance, we check for the eye open as we rotate the dial and read the value off of this. So let's check for leakage first. So this should be, should be good to 350, so let's go 100 and see. So it lit up, but then it faded out. That's a fantastic sign. Here, I'll do this in complete darkness. Let's go to two. Taking longer, but what that means is, that that's what a healthy cap will do. It means, yeah, there's current flowing while it charges up. And once it charges up, current flow stops, the light goes out. That's an excellent sign. Let's go to three. And this is exactly what I would expect as I go higher in voltage. It takes longer and longer for that light to go out. So we should be good, be good, we should be good to 350. I'm putting about 300 on it. It's not going out. Let's go back to 200. One out. 100. Zero. Do you see that? This neon bulb has two sides to it. One lights up and I go clockwise and it's charging like that. When you discharge it, the other side lights. So that's excellent. It means at 200 volts, we're charging, it goes out, we don't have excessive leakage current. When I go to zero, it's putting energy back into the system. It means it, it is capable of storing energy, not leaking it away, and then delivering it back to the system. It's exactly what a capacitor is supposed to do. However, when we go to 300, and it should be good to 350, Oh, hey, it went out, so that means, or no, sorry, we're only at 200. At 300, it hasn't gone out yet. Okay, it did. So what does that mean? That means it formed up. 
it's now capable of having 300 volts across it without breaking down, without having current flowing where it's not supposed to flow. If we go back to zero, 80 microfarad is relatively large, so that light stays lit for a while. That's that's excellent. So yeah, I would expect if you put this cap on a circuit that called for an 80 microfarad, 300 volt cap, it would work all right. Let's check the capacitance now. So for that, I'm going to C1 range. Zoom in on the I tube here. Okay. Uh, this capacitance meter 80 is kind of pushing what it can go up to. The last mark on here is 70, so 80 is going to be right near the edge. And yeah, we get that pie wedge going. And it's a little off scale, but that's. That's about where I would expect it to be. It's it's near the end, the max mark on the scale. So, yeah, this cap seems to be okay. Let's try another one. Uh, let's try to find one that's a little bit higher voltage if we can. This one's huge. Whoa. <laughs> 500 microfarad, 400 microfarad, 150 volt. This tester can't handle that, so it's let's say that this 4 and 500 microfarad. All right. Yeah, this guy's a little bit too big too, but we can try it. So the smallest cap in this one is 100 microfarad, 350 volts. So we're kind of pushing what this meter can do, capacitance-wise. We can certainly check the leakage in any of these though. So. Let's put our negative to the can and positive. Let's do the 100 microfarad section. That's the plus. And here we go again. Check for leakage. All right, formed up to 100. Two hundred, no problem. Three hundred, taking a bit of time, just like the other one did. Now, if you're really trying to form up caps, you should let it sit for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, an hour or two if you really want to squeeze some life out of something. These are forming up in seconds, which is an excellent sign. And again, it returns energy back to the system. 100 microfarads taking quite a while to fade out. Check for capacitance. Again, this is really at the limit of the meter, but yeah, we are getting maximum deflection right at the edge of the meter. So, yeah, you could use these caps. Might last a year, might last a week, might last 20 years. That I can't say because they're well past their shelf life. But they test okay. I don't think I ever tested new old stock caps before. <sighs> that does give me pause. I have a box in the garage with about a hundred the different brands Sprague, Mallory and whatnot and I've, I've never th considered using them I bought them so I could restuff them if I wanted to but you know <laughs> they test okay and if I was to use them in one of my sets and I keep an eye on it while I'm running it I would know to shut it down if anything goes wrong it's kind of tempting to use them so I'm curious to see what you all think about would you use parts that are 50 years old? I don't know exactly how old these are. Let's see if I can find a manufacturer. 7834. Okay, maybe these are from 1978, which <laughs> my first thought was, ah, it's not that old. But yeah, okay, 78 is a while ago. So 
what's that, 45 years ago, 46 years ago, <laughs> would you use parts that are about 50 years old? If I was putting it in a customer set, unless they fully understood the situation and they approved it, I just couldn't because I can't guarantee that the parts are going to last. But, eh, I don't know, I don't know. I hope you found this interesting and let me know what you all think.